Hello and welcome to another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. I am the player who plays as the King Under the Mountain and today I'm going to continue my kind of post two point whatever you want to call it commander guide uh, after the September the 25th update following PBE um, just to kind of showcase some changes and theory crafts and, and different commanders that I think have risen back towards the meta or have possibly improved and I'm probably going to do a couple that I think have actually got worse. Um, before the end of the week, I would guess. So today I'm going to be talking back to my favourite subject um, that I probably have in this game, and that's dwarves. And today we're going to be talking about Falgon, who I'm actually confused by some people's opinion that he's got worse after the 2.5 update, because for me, his kit's actually got more streamlined, and we'll come into that. We'll go into his builds, and we'll go into what kind of equipment you might need, kind of ignore what I've got on him at the moment. Um to a degree i suppose um we'll we'll go into those skills we'll go into the formations that you might see him in we'll go into his restrictions and limitations we'll look at his unique you know all those good stuff if you want a normal commander guide there's plenty of those online to tell you what weapons to choose for these kind of people i'm just going to go over and tell you what things matter to this commander and how he interacts with with other formations and what's i think probably his biggest benefit now um <clears throat> But anyway, we'll, we'll see. So, first of all, I suppose, as always, we'll have to go into the fact that he's a, he's a dwarf and his name is Falcon. So, there you go. So, we'll go into his skills. That wasn't the end, by the way. Um, his skills. Let's start with Musician, because it's one of those trees that's been around for a long time. One man and his banjo. Dwalin has it. Uh, he has it. You know, these kind of things. So... At max level, because that's what we're talking about here, it restores 420% HP every three rounds to the commander's formation unit once, effect modified by focus stat. Now, I understand a heal should be modified by focus, but if you really, really wanted to streamline his kit, they should probably modify off command. Uh, same as before, it probably should have modified off commander defense, but as they've changed that mechanic, and I, I will go into why that's important with Falgan, you're not likely to stack focus on him. Ironically, the helmet that I currently have on him does have a little bit of focus on it. Um, I don't know. So there's an argument you could use it, but that's a different thing. I've got to test it. So at level 5, quite useful. Uh, purifies a debuff. And at level 10, uh, it gives you plus 10 unit defense, which does go well with his kit because you are going to be using him as a tank, not a damage dealer, just for the uh, just for the record. His other R0 skill... Uh, for each type of dwarf in the formation in your unit army... Well, let's start that again. I haven't had enough coffee yet today. For each type of dwarf formation unit in your army, defense the commander's formation plus 10 up to two stacks. Now, that's pretty cool. And at level 5, it can stack three times. And at level 10, it's plus 2 HP, which kind of counteracts the um, Guardian nerf, which was 2 HP. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, pay your money, take the choice. But you could potentially run, I don't know, Ram Riders, Iron Warriors, Guardians, and Depth Defenders. Or a T2 Shield Bearer or something like that. You could run an Axe Thrower, but why you'd want to do that, I don't know. Um, and you could potentially stack, that's, well, it's a lot, to be honest, on your Commander's Formation. So what you're talking about there, you could get 40, you could get 40 up to 3 stacks. That's 120 defense, as far as I can see. Unless I'm going really wrong. So, you know, you can make him the tankiest, I think, commander probably in the game. Um, if you put something like a, a Swan Knight on him or a Troll or um, or a Great Beast, to be honest, works pretty well on him. But we'll go into that later on from a unit perspective as we're currently in skills. This is the one that doesn't really line up um, with any part of the kit, really. So... You could build him, and it kind of worked a little bit better before, because when it was um, his R5 scaled off commander defense, you could at least use something like a hammer of Moria and, and make it so it was palatable to make it work. Now, with the way he works, you, you're probably just going to build excessive command, to be honest, and make him tank. I'm inclined to run a point in here just to try and clear a little tiny, tiny bit of white council early on. Um... The swings and roundabouts on that, you, you probably wouldn't look to do that. But it, I don't know, it's my school of thought, so I, I will come back to that shortly. So it is the best damage skill in the game during his blood, as far as I can, I'm concerned. 
But unfortunately, it's put on a dwarf who sadly isn't really going to use it. And this is what I mean by his kit is more streamlined, but it's also got some negatives. Because as you've seen so far, we've got two things that scale off different things than what you're actually going to build. So pay your money and take your choice. Um, here's R4 skill as it now is. I must remember that Jorin's Blood is his R2 skill, not the R3. So his R4 skill is Thrain's Guard, which is a really, really cool skill and is kind of like the dwarven form of White Council. So it is race specific, which means you get people drawing a lot of comparisons to Gil because you have to use uh, dwarves with, with Thrain's Guard to make it work, whereas with Gil you have to use elves. Personally, um, they're a different way of going around it because Gil uses Evade and... Um, Obviously, this is kind of like a white council for dwarves. So there is a big difference, I think, in, in that. But I can see why people draw comparisons. And why on earth, from that point on, though, you draw any more comparisons? Because elves are the squishiest troop in the game, as far as I'm concerned. And dwarves are pretty much hard as nails. So, you know, there isn't really a contest from a troop perspective. I'm just saying from a skill perspective, I could understand it. Not to go uh, elf bashing again, as I, I tend to on a regular basis. So, this skill itself is damage taken by dwarf units in three allied formations from the first hit, six hits, minus 30%. It increases to eight effects, which is one more than White Council at level five. And this is the important one, and, and I'm going to come on to talk about this and why I think this makes him more meta now than what he was before. So, his level 10 effect now no longer scales off commander defense, which I think some people still don't know, which is criminal to not know that. But it now scales off the command stat as it was part of this update where pretty much everything now scales off command, which I think is a great change. So it has allowed you to streamline his kit. Uh, as far as the build goes, at respect 4, I would do this. Now, there is a school of thought to say you probably wouldn't do this, but I, I would. And for the simple reason is that this extra one to two hits sometimes in that early round can just clear white council just in time. And that's why I think it's important to do that. So you've got him basically tanking. He's taking a little extra hit off white council. And then he's got a small um, a small sort of a percentage chance of restoring some HP to his formation unit. Which is quite useful because if we're going to talk about units, he's, he's going to be using a tank unit. So I've seen people use cataphracts. I've seen people use um, a little, little uh, great beast. I've seen people use swan knights. All of them very effective. And trolls, I've seen them um, be used on him. All really, really effective troop types, depending on what your build is and how you want it to run. Um Interestingly, you don't want to run him with a dwarf because you, you want to put dwarfs in your other three formations because he's going to tank for you. And then you make sure this guarantees to hit the rest of your formations by them having dwarves. Now, this skill with a decent command stat can get up over 60%. And the reason why I think he is more meta now than what he was before is because Sauron does not um, counter the command stat during the enemy skill which I think is a great change. So I'm going to do a comparison to White Council very quickly with that. But anyway, if I was respect five, I would probably change this build to five points in Musician. And I would uh, get this one buff, one debuff purified. Now, again, this is, this is one of those things. So if I was respect six, I would then probably put a point back in here and then fill up here to respect 10. But once I was respect 10, I would probably redo this completely. And I would go like this. And I would take the extra 10 unit defense. And I would take the heal. And I'm not likely to have much focus, but I'm going to talk through that option shortly. You've got the extra unit defense. If you ascend him, which personally I actually think he's a great option to ascend, and I will come into that when I go into his unique in a minute, uh, the extra points then go into Durin's blood, and you're then taking away that one point of White Council again. But you've you've basically you only need him to really be respect ten, at most respect thirteen for him to actually do what you need to do in your kit, which in the modern day isn't too bad to be honest. After that, I would say for it into here, but there's no points. He doesn't have dwarfs. So anyway. From that, we'll go into his relic. 
and probably in my opinion one of the best relics in the game one it is cool it is called the hardy buckler and everyone loves a dwarf shield let's be honest i mean look at that little face um but you want the command you aren't really too bothered about these two and you want some unit defense so yet again if you're upgrading it you've got two stats that you you're probably okay with it's this that's uh that makes it really really impressive and it scales really nicely too so Adventurous Determination is reduces damage received by this formation's melee unit by 1%. Now, if he's running a tank unit, it's it's going to be a melee unit. So, increases damage dealt by this formation's range unit by 1%. Well, we're not really interested in that because we're not going to use him with axe throwers, let's be honest. So, The above effects gain 1% for each allied dwarf unit present. Now, obviously, that scales upwards. So, if you were to refine that, you get 6%. And it can stack up to three side, three times. So if you're using different types of dwarves, this is a flat reduction. That's impressive um, as far as reduction goes. And that's why I'm saying as a tank, particularly with his unique, I actually think he's one of the best tanks in the game and has a fantastic support skill. The only sort of downside is you are locked into dwarves, which have had a slight nerf, but he does make up for it with a small unit. Now... The counterpoint to that will be, but everyone's going to run the medium unit meta, and you can't run the small units so much, which is what dwarfs are. I'm still unconvinced that that meta will work long term, because I think in competitive servers where people will have to um, have to probably use the resources a little bit more wisely, shall we say, to make sure they're in the fight longer so they can actually do stuff, I think um, small units will make a comeback into that. I also think as people try to counter the medium unit meta, there is a place for um, people to be start building large units. And then at that point, you could have Falcon in a B team with small units and dwarves on some damage dealers, for example. And um, from that point on, you would then counter the large unit, which makes it even more palatable for you. So you gain all this reduction, plus you're on a counter. Happy days. Obviously, the dwarves do have a mounted unit, which you could use. So if you wanted to use him in your main formation, because honestly, I, I do think even with Rams, he's, he's pretty tanky, to be honest, with the with the unique in particular. Um, you, you could just run a full Rams formation and run something like a Swan Knight on him, and you've then instantly got back to that sort of medium unit meta. So... I, there are ways of using him in the meta. I, I honestly think he's more meta now than he's ever been. Um, so that's kind of the relic. Um, I'll probably go into equipment and then go into how he interacts and why I think it's so important and the type of formations that he's in. So you are looking to boost this command stat as much as possible. So you are tanking, 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 tanking. I'm not really interested in his commander damage at all, so I'm just interested in the tank stuff. So you're looking for weapons and accessories with high command, you're looking for a helmet with high command, and you're looking for a chest piece with a lot of unit defense, and all your other item pieces, you're looking for unit defense. So if you go look at this, I'm using the Lang because that's what I've got. Ignore the set effects because it doesn't normally go on Falgin, I'm just playing around with them. Um, so I would be looking at using a Reckoning there, for example, which I think is best in slot for him. The only issue I have with a Reckoning is that if you try and swap it to an ALF formation where you're trying to use a gear, you can't use it. So if you're trying to make your gear versatile, Lang's probably the way forward. But then it's also really hard to play Dwarves and Elves because you've got a half your barracks. So I don't think you do that. I think you make a choice and you, and you commit to either being a Dwarf or being an Elf. I know which one I'm going to be, but, you know, if you want to be the squishy ones, go for it. Um... So you're looking to get as much unit defense as you can and as much command as you can. Chess piece, again, this will be the best in slot for you, the high elf Orberg. Um Helmet-wise, I am going to come back to, because uh, I spoke about this earlier on, but uh, you want something like a harp of Rivendell for, again, for the command and the unit defense. I'm going to talk about sets before I talk about the helmet, because I think the helmet is an important choice and it gives food for thought for people. So your kind of set effects you will be looking at Ah, oh, he says, because I have to click out of this screen and into a different screen. So your set effects that you will be looking for are... I quite like Power Overwhelming because there's a lot of skill, um, skills now that are giving stuns and madness, which he isn't going to do any damage to himself in madness mode, but having that extra reduction is actually pretty impressive, to be honest. So Power Overwhelming, I think, is quite a good one. 
Thick armor is okay, but I don't think you'd ever really use it if you had the choice. Um, Fortitude, I think, is a very good one for him. Evasive action is a great one for him because you're going to be tanking in those first few rounds, and that's the one that personally I think is probably best in slot because um, you're going to be using a taunt troop ideally, to be honest, and I'll go through that mechanic shortly. Then you've got Divide and Conquer that I think is probably his second best one, and Fortitude of Dwarves is actually useless for him because you're not likely to run Dwarves on him if you run him correctly, um, so you can protect the rest of your stuff. So that's kind of how I sit with it, really. Um, so schools of thought on the helmet, because that's where we were, as I press the wrong screen. Let's find Falgin again. So my Falgin is unascended. He will probably become ascended soon. Um, I'm just trying to get Saruman to our den first, and then I will probably, he is my next person to ascend. Um helmet so uh, this is where i become slightly conflicted what you should really want here is a cask of submerged isles if i'm if i'm being brutally honest which i'll sort of show the picture of that shortly but the call's actually quite a nice piece for him in a weird way so it's not best in slot necessarily but if you go past respect 10 you've got the full heal which scales off the focus stat you're still getting quite a lot of unit defense. You're still getting quite a lot. Of, you're getting a little bit of focus and you're getting a lot of command. So I can see why people would use that on him, even though it's a bit weird and a bit zany. The most likely option that you're going to use, and I'll have to go into the chest because um, I do not own a uh, cask of the submerged isle, sadly. Well, I think I did at one stage and I burnt it, which was probably quite stupid. Um, you're likely to be using this to be perfectly honest um and and taking that extra unit defense you could probably argue you could get away with uh, the high elf helm as well with with plus 18 but really and truthfully uh, that's about it the harad cask is is also a good option actually i'd forgot about that one but yeah probably the second best option is is the harad cask but you really you're looking for this cask of the submerged isles mainly for the command and the unit defense you're just trying to make him as tanky as you possibly can um we go down past Dane, who always wants to be on show, that dwarf. So, I will try and just talk through as well. You've got an opportunity at the moment to ascend people quite easily through uh, through the ascension system that they've currently got. So you can get your respect items back, which is quite nice. I've done a video on that. I've done ways of maximising it, which is good, I think. Particularly now you can use all any vouchers you want. So any 40 T3 vouchers you can use to ascend. And any T2 vouchers you can use to ascend. Now... The key to this, as well remember, is he is a tier 2 to commander, but he is also, I would argue, one of the best tanks in the game. So, very, quite easy to level up. The battle pass, as well as a bonus, is also based around him at the moment. And if we're being honest, the weapon that comes in the battle pass isn't the worst for him if you're wanting to refine as a free-to-play player at the moment. So, uh, just food for four. I just think he's quite useful like that. So, this one has 486 command. Um, he is quite, it's not the worst command stat in the world of 98. Um, the theory, by the way, behind that point in um, Durin's Blood the skill is that he's quicker than all the other dwarves. He's not quicker than Bjorn, though, which is a slight problem. Um, so he will hit before that to try and clear White Council, but really and truthfully, you're trying to clear White Council before Bjorn hits anyway in round four. So he does hit in round three before a Dane. It's a theory. Um, anyway, we're kind of digressing down a rabbit hole there. So I want to talk about what his his best skill and why I think he is now more meta than what he was before. So Thrain's Guard is basically a dwarf version of White Council. Scales pretty much to the same level if you can get enough command with this uh, level 10. And you get an extra instance, which isn't really a great deal, but it, it can come in useful. You know, it's it's still an extra instance instance of damage that someone's got to clear. Um, and I'm going to explain why I think it's better than White Council. So, White Council scales off focus, same as this scales off command. So Gandalf's kit, fair enough. You want him to scale off focus, right? Some people do build him as a tank, like me, a little bit. So you have a bit of focus and command on a Gandalf. Fair enough. Um. With Falgin, you can pretty much just dump command on him to extenuate that uh, Thrain's guard. But 
the key kicker for me, he says, if he can find it, is Sauron. <clears throat> so if you run into a Sauron, Sauron has this skill now called the enemy because they've changed the deceiver. I've talked about this, I think, in every single video, and this shows you the importance of Sauron still in the meta. So the deceiver no longer has pre-battle madness, which I think is a great thing. I might as well just record this bit and just chop it in whenever I want, really. So um, with that changing, they've also changed the enemy. So the enemy now scales off the focus stat, attack, defense, and focus. Now there's your three stats there. Attack, defense, focus, three enemy commanders, minus 15%, effect modified by focus stat. Which you get a little bit of modification, no matter how you build your Sauron, if I'm being honest. Um, and at level 10, which everyone's maxing this out first, stat reduction affects four enemy commanders, right? So you run into an enemy Sau Sauron, and you've got Gandalf the White, or you've got Falgon. Now, if your Gandalf the White is not quick, and Sauron acts before him, you lose a substantial amount of your focus stat which means you lose a substantial amount of your white council because it, the, the percentage damage reduction drops quite significantly. You've got people building a 270 focus Gandalf the White, which is absolutely made of paper after it's got through round four because he's he's there using Gil Evasion and then he's using white council. But if you're taking away such a huge percentage of white council, which Sauron can do, you're taking away a lot of the effect of Gandalf the White into the rest of that formation. <clears throat> I also accept that Falgon is locked to Dwarves, so that's fine. I also accept that Gandalf the White is going to do some damage through his focus tree, particularly at high respect. He's got some great focus damage, and, and I completely understand that. I'm talking purely as a tank and white council. So <clears throat> this goes for Gandalf the Grey as well. So with Falgon scaling off the command stat, he is not affected by this. It doesn't matter how slow he is. You can build him to purely tank. You haven't got to worry about anything else. You haven't got to worry about skills being stolen. So for me, Thrain's Guard is a slightly better skill in the current meta, providing you are going to play Dwarfs. Now, I'm not talking about him saying he's a better commander than Gandalf the White. I'm saying he's a pure tank with a skill that protects your formation. That skill, to me, is actually better than a White Council. And you get an extra instance of damage. So uh, to say he his kit hasn't been streamlined, it has. It's just it's a shame that a couple of pieces of his kit are still a little bit rogue compared to the left, left the rest, shall we say? So uh, formations that you see him in. For me, um, he obviously synergizes quite well with the dwarves. So you could put a Gimli Day in combination because they're going to have dwarves. They'll benefit from the bloodline skill. You could go uh, Gimli Dane. If you're playing NRP, for example, you could go um, Gimli, Dane, Sauron, and um, Falgon, of course, which would work in the same way as a Gandalf the White kind of formation. I would argue that the Gandalf or White, the White formation is still better, but I'm just saying as a slightly different option, it gives you that, that choice. Um, I think he makes a great addition to any B team as well if you're going to run around with that because you, you can obviously try and counter um, large units if you're running the medium unit meta, or so it's called. Um, so I think that's a great difference. In role play, I also think he, he's pretty useful if you're not going to use a Gilgalad formation, particularly with Gilgalad being a tier 3 commander. Um, Falgon is a little bit cheaper as a tier 2, so playable from R4 personally same as Gil but he's easier to unlock at R4 particularly with the season pass so you could get yourself quite nicely into a situation where he's in a, a free to play A team with, with some really tanky units like a Great Beast or a Swan Knight or whichever we've, we've sort of spoke about um, so yeah I, I think he has got a place somewhere in the meta is, is kind of where I'm concluding with this con conversation um, from, a, from an NRP perspective he's probably a little bit further down but as a pure tank, I now think he's better than Frodo. And with the Unique, which is clearly um, a, a serious piece of kit, bear in mind that from the Unique itself and the damage reduction. So if we just go back to the Relic. I keep forgetting they're called Relics, not Unique. So for 10, um, for 10 Mithril, it's an incredible sort of piece of kit. But if you're talking about for, um, for refining, for example, this is all damage right so it's not um this damage and this damage it's not just physical it's not elemental it's both so with the new saruman meta for example where he's pumping out 
sort of I say the Saruman meta uh, who knows if he's actually in the meta but he's up there somewhere as in he may not be the meta but he's definitely up there in them top five commanders now so with him pumping out so much focus damage this reduction is actually pretty handy to cancelling out those first four or five rounds um so it's food food for thought really on that but I really like him and not just because he's a dwarf I may be slightly biased um uh, like I say, I, I do think he's actually got better and he is somewhere in that meta and I think he's a slightly cheaper option than a lot of uh, tanks. Definitely with the unique better than Frodo and Sam and I think post-update, um, better than Frodo and Sam for me also. He just restricts a little bit in regards to what troops you can use. Um, but hopefully that's giving you some food for thought into into slightly different formations. Like I say, I think he's great. Um, he's like the little guy with the cute beard. But yeah, as always, when you're building these teams and doing whatever you want to do, if in doubt, always follow your nose.